Hi, my name is Sierra Rice, and I just want to share my personal journey with you guys. So I'm just going to read what I have written here just because it's a lot of points to highlight and I want to make sure I can get everything down and also just because it's a little emotional I just want to be able to stay on track um, and everything despite all that. Growing up my biological mother and father divorced when I was four years old. I vividly remember how my father was physically, mentally, and emotionally abusive to my mother. He also threatened to harm my younger brother, sister, and I. My mother remarried when I was seven years old. I have one biological sister, one biological brother, one half brother, and one half sister. Life was serene and filled with fun, memories in Ohio, until my mother passed away in 2009 due to diabetic complications and cardiac arrest. Suddenly being the eldest child at 11 years old, I had to grow up and care for my four younger siblings. Over the next few months, the court ordered my siblings and me to move with our biological father while our half-siblings continued to live with our stepfather. We were afraid because we knew that our father and how he was like, however we tried to give him a chance. Six months after living with our father, the abuse started to arise within the household. Every time we tried to tell someone of his wrongdoings, the frequency and intensity of the abuse would increase. I clearly, clearly remember when my father broke my nose, choked my brother, and gave my brother, sister, and I countless concussions and welts, along with the physical neglect of not eating enough food. For the first time in 2013, I prayed that if God were real, he would get my siblings and me out of the situation before anything else could happen. God answered our prayers. Our father was arrested. Then we were taken into Department of Social Services, DSS, custody in Johnston County, North Carolina. My siblings and I started together in the same foster home. However, my siblings and I were separated into different foster homes over time. I was determined to break the cycle. I was dueled and enrolled in Johnston County Community Middle College High School and Johnston Community College. I rose against the odds. I was determined to break the chain and not repeat the cycle of abuse. I was determined to show the world that foster kids can be successful. In May 2016, I graduated high school with 51 college credits, high honors, and a 4.4 GPA. In 2016, I earned an associate's in science. In 2016, I started a new journey at Western Carolina University with dreams and countless ambitions. During my first semester at Western Carolina University in 2016, I fell from a 20 foot cliff onto a sharp, jagged rock at Paradise Falls. Once I hit the rock, I knew that God saved me and that I would make it. I retained permanent spinal fractures and abnormalities, later resulting in disc degenerative disc disease, DDD. But I am grateful to walk and be alive. I was more determined than ever to receive my education and break the cycle. I became involved with campus ministry and leadership. I became closer to God. My heart changed for the Lord who led me in a new direction. My relationship with God gave me faith and courage to make a difference as a domestic violence, foster care, and trauma survivor. In December 2017, I was abandoned by my foster family. I was crushed, but God and my church family helped me get through it. Through God, I learned to be genuinely grateful for what I had. Life had started to turn around for the better. I ran hard after the Lord and what he had for me. In September 2018, I received my 11th concussion from playing volleyball. Previously, I had 10 concussions from child abuse. I experienced six additional concussions due to passing out spells, so a total of 16 concussions. My comorbidities and symptoms increase, such as overactive bladder syndrome, irritable bowel syndrome, kidney stones, blurred vision, hearing loss, dermatological issues, body aches, chronic myofascial pain, hypermobility spectrum disorder, muscle spasms, high heart rate, 
low blood pressure, migraines, dizziness, obesity, fainting, anxiety, depression, nausea, abdominal pain, bloating, brain fog, overheating, sweating, fatigue, tremors, and many, many more. In May 2019, I had to take mandatory bed rest. The doctors in the mountains could not help me due to the complexity of my unknown and misdiagnosed disorder. However, I knew that God was faithful. I continued to fight and pursue my education. In December 2019, I completed an undergraduate research senior thesis, seven conferences, two grants, two mentorships, two years of research, and an excellence in biology research award, along with countless hours of volunteer service upon graduating from Western Carolina University with a bachelor's in cellular and molecular biology. Due to COVID-19, I had to move to Raleigh to help aid in qPCR testing as a molecular scientist during the pandemic in August 2020. My health continued to fail while the comorbidity, comorbidities and symptoms had increased severely. In January 2021, I transferred jobs to work as a molecular scientist too, where I work in oncology, assay, validation and development, and biomarker research through next generation sequencing, NGS. I finally had better access to healthcare at the University of North Carolina, Duke University, and Wake Med Healthcare. In March 2021, I was accepted by Auburn University's PhD in biology program. However, I had to decline because my health was still unresolved and I was in physical therapy programs for my pelvic and spine. In September 2021 at UNC, I was finally diagnosed with an overlap of postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, POTS, and vasovagal syncope. Postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, POTS, is a condition where the autonomic nervous system is unable to regulate circulation, heart rate, and blood pressure. POTS is the overall culprit for all my comorbidities and symptoms. I start to see an improvement in my POTS through the help of my healthcare providers in Raleigh, Durham, and Chapel Hill, North Carolina. In November 2021, I developed pericarditis, swelling of the outer layer of the heart due to a severe allergic reaction. The pericarditis worsened my POTS. Due to the swelling around my heart and the inability to move around as much as I once did, my muscles start to atrophy. In March 2022, I had to receive cardiac infusions and almost became completely disabled. Thankfully, the Lord protected me and I had a flexible work schedule. I'm grateful that my family, friends, and coworkers helped me and supported me physically, mentally, and emotionally while in a deep valley. In April 2022, I entered a pod specific physical therapy program at Wake Med. Upon completing the program in June 2022, I regained muscle tone, lost weight, decreased my heart rate, normalized my blood pressure and restored my energy. I am at the point of POTS management. Despite my POTS disability, I am resilient. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Isaiah 40, 31, NIV. Furthermore, I have a normal life surrounding my POTS management. I can go through the day without fear of having a POTS episode. I am able to exercise at the gym, hike during most seasons minus the summer, go to the mall and hang out with family and friends. I live a content and peaceful life as long as I maintain my POTS management. I am, a, I am in a loving relationship with my partners and we have three fur babies. Since I do not have to worry about my health nearly as much, we were able to plan for future children. This is something that I never thought that I would be able to do. I am truly grateful that I was able to receive the education, medications, physical therapies, and other treatments that have led to successful management. Due to my POTS journey and scientific background, 
I want to educate everyone on POTS. In the United States, POTS is underdiagnosed due to insufficient knowledge, healthcare inaccessibility, resources, and patient advocacy. My physical therapist encouraged me to share my experience and resources from cited medical organizations and peer review journals. I started a YouTube channel discussing the educational management of postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, POTS, and vasovagal syncope in a presentation format. I received significant interest from my presentation. I condensed a video on my YouTube channel, POTS Resilience with Sierra, of my management plan. I continue to receive interest in POTS education and management, so I created a Facebook page and an Instagram account. I received the most interest from my Instagram account and from the reels on that page. I will continue to make content to help POTS patients and their families, friends, and coworkers understand POTS. Having POTS is challenging daily. The hardest part of my day is getting out of bed due to physical, mental, and emotional limitations. If you can find a reason to get out of bed, it sets the right mindset for the day. It encourages you to move around and start fresh. I am only 26 years old. I have a whole life ahead of me worth living. I am inspired by my progress not to regress to my previous condition. I am confident I will continue to succeed. It takes me a little while to get my meals packed, dressed, and get out the door. I plan five small frequent meals a day. Not only do I have to prepare nutritional contents of small frequent meals wisely, but I have to plan how many ounces I can consume per small frequent meal. I plan to eat each small frequent meal within a specific time frame around my daily living activities to prevent nausea, IBS and esophageal spasms. I plan out my water intake as POTS patients need 110 to 120 ounces of water per day. Following six days a week, I participate in cardiovascular and strength training exercises. If I do not exercise, my muscles will lock up and become extremely painful due to the chronic myofascial pain and the hypermobility spectrum disorder. After exercising, I have enough energy to conquer a day at work. After I go home, I dwindle down with stretches and a nice shower. I often relax by reading or watching TV. I try to sleep at least eight to 10 hours per night to help decrease muscle spasms, muscular pain, nerve pain, tremors, and fatigue. It is essential to follow a regular schedule to help decrease my heart rate and alleviate my symptoms. Please note that if a POTS patient's conditions has severely declined, they might be unable to work and have limited mobility, as I once did. In these cases, cooking, cleaning, and even moving to the restroom can be challenging. POTS is a complex condition. It is difficult for family members, friends, and colleagues to understand POTS when they physically cannot see POTS or know how or what POTS entails. Each POTS patient's own symptoms varies day from day. Please understand that POTS patients try their best to keep up with everyone. Still, sometimes this is difficult due to physically not having normal vitals, their personal symptoms and limitations, and often elevated levels of fatigue. It is okay to set boundaries to help improve your POTS. If you have POTS or suspect that you have POTS, I advise you to keep advocating for yourself until you find the right doctors to help relieve and treat your symptoms. 